Hello everyone, I'm Tommy with Studio Sense. Really happy that you stopped by. Today we're going to do something just a little bit differently than what I normally do. I'm going to focus on a single designer house. So when we return, we're going to go over the lineup, that and more, so stay tuned. Welcome back guys. As I mentioned, I'm focusing on a single designer house. Now it will come as no surprise to you that this house is almost synonymous with affordability coupled with near niche quality fragrance. But what might surprise you is that they make some of the world's finest crystal known to man, truly living up to the art de vivre or the art of living. And of course, I'm referring to the French house Lalique. Lalique. It just rolls off the tongue. What most people know Lalique for is, again, their fragrances smell amazing. And then when you tell someone how much they cost, they're like, you're kidding me, right? We're gonna start out with a Lalique fragrance that is a solid summertime offering, and it is called Lalique White. Now, I've never tried Lalique White, but I've heard really good things about it. Judging by the box, I would say it's a spring and summer offering. So let's go ahead and check out that presentation. That's the presentation of Lalique White. Now Lalique White came out in 2008 and it is from the brain of perfumist Christine Nagel. I didn't think that Lalique White would actually smell that good, but I really, really like it. Now it definitely has a very bright citrusy head to it. So it's got a very bright citrusy opening. In fact, let's go over some of the notes in Lalique White. In the top, you've got bergamot, you've got tamarind and lemon leaf. In the mid, you've got cardamom, nutmeg, violet, and white pepper. And in the base, you've got amber, musk, and cedar. So to me, that's a formula that is perfect for spring and summer weather. In the warmer weather, you do want something that's going to be very fruit juicy, at least to begin with. The fruit's just an introduction into something a little bit more complex and a little bit more sophisticated. So that lemon leaf, the tamarind, those are doing a perfect job of introducing Lalique White. The note trifecta is going to be the lemon leaf, the white pepper, and the cedar. So very woody, very masculine. This to me is almost like a the epitome of clean, crisp, white t-shirt. When you guys were first single, do you remember that? You first started doing your laundry, maybe you didn't know how, maybe you didn't have anybody to show you how to do it. So you threw your whites and your darks all together. And so you got those t-shirts out that once were really white and clean looking and suddenly they just look like an off-white, like a dirty white. And thereafter, you didn't feel super great putting them on because it just feels like old used clothes or dirty clothes, even though they were clean. And then your mother came along to bring you chicken soup because you were sick or something. And she decided to stay a little bit because you know how moms are. And she did the laundry. You get your t-shirts the next day and they're supremely white again. They look brand new. In fact, you think she went out and bought your brand new t-shirts. And you're like, mom, what did you do? She goes, oh, I just used a lid full of bleach. Never would have thought of that. And it made those t-shirts super wide again. That's what this feels like to me. It feels like taking something that isn't super great and making it great. And isn't that what our fragrances are here for, right? That's why we spray these on to feel better, to feel brighter, to feel cleaner, feel confident, to feel stronger. Whatever edge that we want to get, fragrances allow us, at least mentally, psychologically, they give us that and maybe a little bit to real world edge. That atomizer is amazing. I mean, it sprays a tremendous amount of juice. I love how the tamarind and the lemon leaf are supplemented by the white pepper. So white pepper acts in Lalique White like ginger does in most other men's fragrance, it, where it gives it that ebullience, that bubbly feel, that effervescent, like popping off the skin. That's where the projection is gonna come from in Lalique White. Oh, again, part to that white pepper 
and the mix of the musk and amber. I'm really excited to wear it. Now, it is going to be a spring and summer fragrance. You can just look at the bottle and know, no, not white for snow, white for clean, bright daytime. It's a great daytime. You can wear it at nighttime too, but it's primarily gonna be a daytime casual fragrance. Perfect for the office. Definitely not something that's gonna be cloying or overpowering, and yet it's gonna have a girth or a briskness about it that you can even smell through your mask. Do you like horses? I like horses. It's been a long time since I've ridden one. I think they're really beautiful animals. And here in East Tennessee, there are a lot of farms with horses on them, especially in North and South Carolina. There are a tremendous number of, I guess, ranches where people raise and they train horses and they have shows and things like that. The reason I'm bringing it up is because the next fragrance in the lineup today is Lalique. Forum Equus for Equestrian. And the bottle, the presentation is amazing. Now, the reason I'm not busting this out of a box is that it is a tester. Oftentimes, you'll find testers for much less. And even though this was very inexpensive to begin with, the tester was even less. So I went ahead and went for the tester. So forgive me for not having a box, but basically it did come in a brown box that got thrown away by mistake. I do want to show you a little bit about the presentation though. We're going to do our normal me on the other side of the camera. So let's check out Lalique Porome Equus. Lilic Porome Equus came out in 2001. It's from perfumist Emily Bevier Copperman. In the top, Equus has cardamom, juniper berry, and citrus zest. In the mid, you've got violet leaf, mace, and sequoia wood, and I knew that I smelled violet in this. That's awesome, I love violet leaf. With a base of vetiver, amorous, benzoin, and cyan. So, very, very exotic smelling with some really neat notes in there. Now, I can tell, like I did catch the iris a little bit, but I think this is gonna be one of those fragrances that you really wait for the dry down. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this on and we'll get to that dry down. There's something about this fragrance though, like when you first smell it, it's very bright, it's very unique. There's almost like a medicinal quality of this. Initially, when the alcohol is evaporating, I get kind of an, a medicinal type smell out of it, but I know that's just kind of the, the alcohol burning off a little bit. I have to say that Lalique Porome Equus smells exactly like the equestrian concept. It's almost like taking riding lessons, and the person you're taking the lesson from is this big, strong, burly man who comes walking out after having cleaned up, getting ready for his day, and he just smells like he's been around horses but he also has that almost barbershop, clean shaven, but it's also extremely elegant. The amorous and the benzoin but it's actually very elegant too. So the vetiver is opening up into a very peculiarly dry, elegant, sharp, slightly animalic, but it's not off-putting. It's just enough to make this multi-layered and complex, kind of an herbal, woody, aromatic mood, similar to say, Trissardi um, Inside Man, similar vein. And even though there is no leather note in here, something is working together, whether it's the Siam and the Benzoin, Iris Leaf, there's something that's working together to, to come across as leathery. So there's something dark and slightly resinous and just a tinge of animalic, almost like that leather has been sitting on a horse, right? It's amazing, but I don't know how they accomplish it. But to me, this is probably the closest to niche quality of a fragrance that I've ever experienced with Lalique. So this is not necessarily gonna be a summertime offering. You can wear it year round, but this is gonna probably work best in cooler weather. Cooler weather keeps those notes together so that they're not like dying out or dropping, the bottoms dropping out of your fragrance, which often happens again in high heat, as I've mentioned before wouldn't necessarily wear that in high heat. I would recommend this in slightly cooler weather, like the cool, like cooler nighttime where during summer would be appropriate or fall and winter is gonna be where you would best utilize this fragrance. It's projecting really well off my skin. There's a, there's a sharpness, there's a bracing effect that comes from this fragrance that will lend itself well in terms of projection. In terms of longevity, I'm not so sure, but I would say it's probably gonna be good to average longevity, similar to Lalique White. 
This next La Ligue offering also came out in 1997. It's also an eau de parfum, like Equus is, but it's from the perfumist Maurice Roussel. And I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, Maurice. He did an amazing job. It as well is also a La Ligue pour homme, but instead of Equus or horse, this is King of the Jungle, Lion. That's right. Even though lions aren't in the jungle, they're in the Serengeti, <laughs> the desert, they're still king of the jungle. They're king of the desert as well. So, La Ligue pour Homme Eau de Parfum Lion, let's check out that presentation. Just like the Equus, the, the horse version, the lion version is also etched into the glass and it's very cool. The person who etched this thought that a horse head and a lion head looked very similar because it's hard to tell the difference. But there's a little bit of a fang in there and the mane is a little bit more like a lion's mane than a horse's mane. This has a lot going on in it. There are a lot of nuances here. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the notes in La Ligue Pour Homme Lion. Rosemary, lavender, grapefruit, mandarin, bergamot, tangerine, pomelo. Those are all just in the top. In the mid, you've got iris, jasmine, lily of the valley, and cedar. In the base, you've got sandalwood, amber, patchouli, vanilla, and oak moss. So ton of notes in this. A lot going on in this. When you first smell it, it's you're not sure what to think. Similar to Equus, it's got a bracing quality about it, like a very brisk, a very sharp, almost pungent quality. This one I would say is less pungent than Equus, but this one has a, a sharper kick to it. The edge is, is more sharp. The first thing that I smelled was the, the rosemary. Rosemary can also be very, very spicy and very sharp. Rosemary, uh, jasmine, lavender, and iris working together in this. Wow, it's, it's an amazingly, like this is a sophisticated, very refined, curated, and sophisticated fragrance. This is not for the faint of heart, and it's also not for the young clubbing age. I wouldn't say this is an old man fragrance like some fragrances get labeled. This is a mature man's fragrance. This is someone who has had life experience. This is somebody that's not worried about street cred because of, they've got all the cred in their life experience that they need. Right away, the bergamot, the rosemary, and the grapefruit is what stands out in the top. It's very spicy, a little bit acerbic, but again, the first thing that hit me in the face was the rosemary. It's a very, like a go-getting rosemary. It's very aggressive. What's really cool about that aggressive beginning is that it's just a start. It's just the top. It's an introduction. So it captures your attention right away, but it doesn't stay that way. It's starting to dry down now and it's calming down a little bit, but within those calm waters are deeply complex fragrance. This is another fragrance that rides the line of seasons. I wouldn't necessarily say to, to bomb this out in spring and summer. You, can, you could wear it, again, you could wear it year round, but it's very similar to Equus. High heat's not gonna be good for this, and also cooler weather, you might get a little bit more longevity out of cooler weather than you will in heat uh, with Lion. In the base, some of the creaminess is, is softening into like a um, sandalwood vanilla combination, which they work really well together. And that's making this a little bit calmer, a little bit more. Its disposition is that of someone very refined, very intelligent and sophisticated, but is ready for the action when it's brought. So it's evolving into something that is gonna be very, very versatile uh, in terms of when to wear. Again, stay away from the extremes. High heat, no. Super cold weather, no, but the betweens are gonna be great for this. Daytime, nighttime, casual wear is perfect for this, but it's a little bit more refined and curated than say Equus. So you could wear this to a black tie event or an upscale situation or environment. So far, all three of these fragrances have been very attention getting. So in terms of performance, longevity is probably gonna be good to average 
and the projection is definitely going to be very good. All right, guys, we're into our last Lalique fragrance, and it is one that you're familiar with. It was preceded by two, so it's a flanker of the first two, and that is Encre Noir, Encre Noir Sport, and then this one is Encre Noir a la Extreme. I'm probably saying that wrong. Forgive the box, it is a tester, and this is why most of the time I don't show you the box that a tester comes in, just because it's a standard fare and it's kind of ugly and there's really nothing to present or to show. It doesn't add to the presentation at all, but I did wanna show you, hey, this is brand new. You'll see fragrances that are listed as unboxed or as a tester. Now, there is a difference between the two. A tester, of course, is just that. It's one that people either got a hold of and used or it sat on the shelf and nobody ever used it. So it's literally brand new and untouched. Unboxed simply means that the box was likely damaged in transit uh, or either to or by the manufacturer. And so they, it, it literally comes outside of a box. So this is Encre Noir a la Extreme. Let's go ahead and check out that presentation. Okay, now Encre the OG is here, and then Encre Noir Sport. And so third in the line, the third flanker is Encre Noir a la Extreme that I just showed you. The presentation is very similar. It actually looks a little bit sportier than, than does Sport. The only thing differentiating Sport from the standard presentation is the red word Sport. If you look, if there's light in the background, it's like a, a deep blue or green, almost like a cayenne green and this one is just black you can't see through it at all so that's also different similar with the uh, all extreme it's also clear but it's half clear half black so to me this would indicate that it's actually splitting the difference between encre noir and noir sport most of the time with fragrances that are extreme it keeps that same scent profile that same dna and it just adds more to it maybe more in concentration or more in terms of the fragrance itself darkening up making it deeper darker and more complex. I can't imagine Encre Noir being darker than it is because it's already very smoky, very inky. Those are the two most often used adjectives to describe it. But let's go ahead and try it out on the strip. And you notice that it didn't need to be primed. Sometimes testers will come like that. Some, sometimes you'll, you'll have to prime them just like a brand new fragrance because they've never been used. But if the tester's actually been used, obviously that's why you're getting it at a lesser cost. So don't be surprised if it's sometimes like that. Okay, so I gotta try this. Encre Noir. Encre Noir Sport. So I've got Sport here. A la Extreme here. A la, I said a la Extreme, a la Extreme. And then Encre Noir. Well, that brief demonstration taught me, at least, that this is my favorite of the three. I do like the freshness in the sport. That's kind of cool because it takes that dark, inky vetiver, basically, and it lightens it up a little bit and adds a little bit of a um, modernized spin to it, which is nice. But in the Encre line, I really, really, really dig where this is taking the original Encre DNA. In the top, you've got bergamot, you've got elemi resin, and the sea a cypress. You've got two types of vetivers in the mid. You've got Haitian and Java vetiver. Then you've got iris, and then darkening up in there, the frankincense. The base has benzoin, patchouli, and sandalwood as the fixatives that combine everything together and that bind. And boy, does it do a fantastic job. Okay, so this is now my favorite Encre Noir. A la extreme, but how does it project? I'm gonna go ahead and try it out on skin. I know that I really like it on a tester strip. You really have to have that bold, outside the box confidence to carry this off, right? Not everybody can carry off a fragrance like Encre Noir. If you're gonna get in an Aston Martin, you better be somebody that can back up why you're driving in such an iconic automobile, if you're going to wear clothes, if you're going to be anything that's, you know, conspicuous consumption, there's got to be some kind of reason or background or solid foundation that says that, hey, I can carry this off. 
absolutely love this. When it dries down, it is such a masculine combination, patchouli and sandalwood, and then you get the little bit of a darkness with that frankincense and that, that resinous elemy resin, the literal elemy resin. And then of course the cypress is there. The bergamot's there to kind of lighten the mood to begin with it's as an introduction but then you, it darkens really quickly. This is a lovely, dry, elegant, dark inkwell. Fantastic fragrance. I have to tell you guys, this has been all together for me, and I hope for you too, to some degree, because you're, you don't get to experience the actual fragrance here on a video. But this has been a really good, positive experience. I already liked Lalique. You know, nobody had to twist my arm to, to like Lalique as a house, but I'm, I'm fascinated by how they get away with reproducing fragrance after fragrance that's super high quality, almost niche quality, at ridiculously affordable prices. There's no fragrance in here that's more than 40 bucks. So you're looking at this one being right around $33, $34. Lalique White, you can get for about 25. Lalique Porome Lion and Lalique Porome uh, Equus Horse, you can get those for also uh, right around 25 bucks. This is a 75 ml bottle, you can get that for about 25 bucks. But this is also an Eau de Parfum 100 ml bottle for 25 bucks. Guys, I got all of these from fragrancex.net because I pretty much exclusively work with them because they're so good. They automatically, it doesn't matter how much you buy, you don't have to pay for shipping. I really like that fact. You know, up to, you know, free shipping for up to $59.99 minimum. I don't like that. They're just like free shipping. Yeah, buy it from us. I'll leave the links in the description below if you're interested in purchasing any of these and uh, I highly recommend them. There's not a fragrance among them that I wouldn't blind buy. And all these were blind buys for me. Of course, I kind of knew what to expect to a degree with the Ancre Noir because after all, <laughs> it's a flanker, but I didn't expect it to like it more than the first two. So fantastic. Highly recommend if you don't already have them and if they're not already in your fragrance rotation to include them. Well, that's it guys for my quick look at a small mini haul from the house Lalique. Again, if you don't own these, I would highly recommend picking them up. Again, just click on the links below and Fragrance X will set you up. If you do have experience with these, please let me know what your experiences have been like. Guys, thanks so much for stopping by and spending a little bit of time with me on my channel today. As always, thank you so much for your support. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you next time.